I am excited to be here, there's no <laughs> doubt. Uh, but yeah, that was a little bit more, that was like a panic wave. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't hear anything. Um, so to reiterate, I think you, you probably laid the groundwork for, for the story that we'll be airing tonight on um, a, yeah. a workshop for yes. Sanford. Okay, mm -hmm. so Sanford, the city of Sanford, 60,000 people or so, um, and it's the biggest city in Seminole County. What, what they're doing is they're, they're at a point now, a, they're at a point where they're just gonna be looking into the potential of maybe putting a moratorium on building new apartments. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're doing this is to have a sort of a, a proactive approach at the way they're handling growth. They wanna look at whether they are straining infrastructure, whether the police department is getting stretched thin because of the amount of new construction that's coming. Um, and just to give you some context on, on the amount of new uh, apartments that are being built or they're under review currently, 3,800 units. Right now, mm. they have about 8,400 units. So they have a ton of new apartments as this community continues to just boom. It is, um, it's booming there. They have all over from the downtown spot to the historic spots. Mm. And they're just looking at this and weighing mm. the options on, on how they should continue to handle growth mm -hmm. and manage growth. And so I think it's a, a really interesting story. Nothing will be voted on. They're not gonna mm -hmm. vote tonight on whether to, you know, put a moratorium on new apartments being built, but it's something that they're considering and they're gonna just talk it over with the police chief, fire chief, mm -hmm. other city um, officials, and just take a, reflect back and see what they're looking at. And, and I have some stats on, from the police department, about the potential of this is something that they're going to be looking at tonight so just between last year january 1st to december 31st just last year they had 9500 calls to apartments within the city of sanford mm -hmm. and i interviewed someone out there whose wife actually works for the pd and he said that she is uh they're they're stretched thin and and they need more resources so that's something that they'll be talking about tonight and i you know, a lot of cities were seeing growth and just kind of out of control development. And I think this is a, a unique way of kind of like taking a step back and saying, listen, do we want to continue to approve these if we don't have the infrastructure in place? Yeah, and certainly it'll be an interesting conversation. And I know then you talk about the affordability aspect. You know, so many people just can't afford housing and some of these apartments are a solution to that. But again, like you said, it'll be an interesting conversation. I'm sure lots of people on both sides have strong feelings about what they think about this. Absolutely. And and what I found pretty interesting about um, about a lot of the the apartments that are being built, especially the ones that are closer to the airport, is they've got this the flight school that they have at the mm -hmm. airport is really booming as well with the new enrollment. And uh, I talked to one guy who said that they put a new apartment in kind of near the airport and it filled up like that. It went mm -hmm. from, it went to 95% occupancy essentially overnight wow. because of the need uh, mm -hmm. for, for housing. And, you know, it's, it's one, you know, we know how many people are moving to central Florida mm -hmm. and you have to have a place for them to live. But at the same time, you have to have the infrastructure in place and the resources in place to make sure that that growth is managed properly yeah. and that everyone's taken care of. Yeah. What time can we see your story? This will air tonight at uh, 5.30 and 5.45-ish. Um, okay. Fabulous. 5.45-ish. I like it. All right, Justin. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thanks. We always like to get a check of your weather on take six, and we do have some changes on the way that we're keeping a close eye on for you. A front coming through our area later tonight. Here's what it looks like for you right now. Satellite and radar imagery showing some clouds hanging around. We are mostly dry, though, right now out ahead of that front, but we will see a chance of showers as that actually passes through central Florida. Now ahead of that, we are very warm today, sitting right now at 82 in Orlando, 82 in Cocoa Beach, Palm Coast, you're at 79, 80 in Ocala, and 79 right now in Lee. I want you to look at the wind. So out ahead of that front, our winds are coming in out of the south and southwest. That is bringing that warm, moist air up into central Florida. If you've been outside, you know 
It is windy. Winds are at 21 miles per hour right now in Kissimmee. 18 mile per hour winds in Ocala. 18 mile per hour winds in Melbourne. And 21 mile per hour winds right now in New Smyrna Beach. Here's a look at our wind gusts. So winds are gusting on average around 20 to 25 miles per hour right now. Even a little bit higher in Melbourne. Your wind gusts are up to 28 miles per hour. 25 mile per hour wind gusts in both Orlando and Ocala. And 23 mile per hour wind gusts in Daytona Beach. Here's our satellite and radar imagery. There is the front you see off to our our north and west that continues to push toward us. Here's how this evolves for you on the clouds and rain forecast. So we're starting the clock right about now with some clouds hanging around. Then as we roll into the afternoon hours, get a little bit closer to that afternoon drive home. We'll start to see that line of showers moving up into areas like Gainesville that pushes off to the south and east and it does lose some of its energy as it moves into central Florida. So again, our rain chances are only around 20%. We're not expecting anything major. Nine o'clock tonight, still some spotty showers from Palm Coast back down through Leesburg and the villages. We get most of that out of here by around 11 o'clock. I think the last of you to still see some lingering showers will be in areas like Cape Canaveral down to Port Cocoa Beach and Melbourne and down to parts of southern Osceola County. And then we clear most of that out of here as we head through the overnight hours. And I think by around 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow, we'll see a good amount of sunshine. So for today, we'll still get a few degrees warmer than we are right now, going to 85 in Sanford, 83 for your high today in the villages, 81 in Melbourne, and 82 in Palm Coast. Here's how that looks for your next seven days. Again, rain chances are at 20% for today. Tomorrow, we'll see a good amount of sunshine. 69 for your high. Wednesday for your Valentine's Day, looking pretty nice. 71 and 76 on Thursday and Friday. We are tracking another system headed our way this weekend that will bring us a pretty big chance of showers and thunderstorms both weekend days. The highest rain chance will be Sunday at 60%. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells will be here starting on News 6 at 4, so he will break all of this down for you as you look ahead toward the weekend. Lisa Bell, Ginger Gadsden, and I will also see you on News 6 starting at 4. If you have any questions or comments for us at Take 6, head to clickorlando.com slash Take 6. Let us know what's on your mind. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, and I will see you at 4.